The Druid as a class really started to come into its own during Wrath of the Lich King. Long gone were the days of being forced into healing or having to deal with the hybrid tax of vanilla, and with four specializations to choose from, World of Warcraft's master shapeshifters had really begun to adapt themselves to all areas of content. And moving into Cataclysm, Blizzard began to delve more into the various class fantasies that this class can bring, whether that's tanking, melee DPS, range DPS, Yes, or healing. And just in case you are wondering, no druid doesn't get a fourth talent tree in Cataclysm just for Guardian, that would be Mists of Pandaria, but the combined talent tree still made both specs work where they needed to. On the other hand, what is new for the druid is a new race, as trolls can now roll druid in this expansion. But with four specs to break down, the videos covering druids are always pretty sizable. So let's make a start and talk about how the druid changes in Cataclysm and how they are expected to perform in this new expansion. First up, I want to cover the baseline class changes. For balance, Fairy Fire now reduces armor by 4%, stacking to 3 times, and there are no longer major and minor armor debuffs either, and the maximum 12% armor reduction can be done by all the usual stuff you'd expect, such as Sunder, Expose, and so on. Insect Swarm doesn't reduce the target's chance to hit anymore, Soothe Animal is gone and is replaced by just Soothe, which removes removes all enrage effects from an enemy. Thorns is turned into a cooldown based ability and is more powerful instead of being a consistent albeit minor buff. And Innovate gets a nerf, well depending on how you look at it that is, where it used to give about 7800 mana to any target in Wrath, now it will grant 5% mana to an ally or 20% to the druid. This can be improved via talents and glyphs, but as a whole this ability is now more tailored to being used by the druid themselves. A new ability for Cataclysm is Wild Mushroom and Wild Mushroom Detonate. Wild Mushroom allows you to place down three mushrooms that will become invisible after six seconds. Casting Detonate will, you guessed it, make them explode dealing AoE damage to nearby targets. This is a nice ability to set up damage for times when you know adds will come in for PvE as well as providing some burst in PvP. Shrooms can also be upgraded via talents to leave a slow feel behind that can be quite powerful too in the right circumstance. That's balance, next is Feral. So Tiger's Fury now increases physical damage by 15% for 6 seconds instead of a flat amount. Savage Raw has been reworked, and it now increases auto attack damage by 80% instead of all physical damage by 30%. Pretty much all cat form abilities such as Ravage, Shred, Swipe and so on now have a much higher percentage base damage modifier, most likely as a result of the Savage Raw change. And Fairy Fire Feral has the same changes as the balanced version does too, where it now reduces armor by 4%, stacking 3 times. Both Cat and Bear have two abilities which are new, and just have different resource costs depending on what form you're in. Those are Skull Bash, which is a kick on a 1 minute cooldown, but it has a bit of a longer range, and you can lower this cooldown to 10 seconds via Feral Talents. And Stampeding Roar, which is 60% move speed for all players within 10 yards for 8 seconds. A very powerful raid wide ability here, but the 10 yard range is a bit of a killer in terms of actually getting use out of it very often. And no, unfortunately, there is not a glyph or something to improve it either. For Bears, Demoralizing Roar now reduces physical damage of enemies by 10 percent instead of a flat amount. Frenzied Rejuve has been reworked to be much more of a powerful cooldown too. It will now increase max health by 30 percent and it will still convert rage to health. It's basically what survival instincts was from Wrath on top of the heal which it's always had. Savage Defense has also been reworked and is so much stronger than it used to be. Instead of reducing damage from the next attack after you crit, now it gives all non-periodic crits a 50 percent chance to grant an absorb shield. And Bears basically crit non-stop, so this is going to be a very effective, albeit passive, mitigation tool. New to Burr is a proper AoE threat generator in Thrash. This causes instant damage as well as applying a bleed to all nearby targets. And I know bears were not the most popular pick throughout Wrath. This will be changing in Kata, but we'll talk more about that soon when we get to talents. Over in the restoration tree, Omen of Clarity is now a baseline ability for all druids, and it can be further improved via talents. Otherwise, it works the way it always has, where casting or attacking has a chance to make your next ability free. Nourish has moved up from a 1.5 
five second cast to a three second one and is now considered your slow but efficient heal. And Mark of the Wild now has the same buff as Blessing of Kings, meaning it grants 5% stats and some resistances. Tranquility gets a huge buff in Cataclysm and is now a very powerful healing tool that can affect both party and raid members. The healing over time portion of regrowth is more powerful, but lasts 6 seconds down from 21, and life bloom's duration has increased from 7 to 10 seconds. New for restoration is remove corruption, which just combines cure poison and decurse into one button. So those are our baseline changes, now we have the talents. For this we'll be checking out some builds as well as the most impactful changes to your talent trees. And as much as you've probably heard that Kata talent trees made them smaller or simpler, well you're gonna see throughout these class videos there is a lot going on here, and tons of interesting gameplay altering changes to look forwards to. We'll start off with the Boonkins again, why not? So the first thing you'll want to know about talents in Kata is when you commit a point to a talent tree, you'll instantly get certain bonus bonuses straight away, and when you're leveling a character, these bonuses will be obtained at level 10. You will also have to spend 31 points in that tree before you can branch out to the other two, which yes, does make their less choice overall, but if we look at Wrath, nearly every spec in the game went down and got their end of talent tree ability, so it was kind of an illusion of choice thing in the end. Anyways, when specking into Boonkin, you'll gain bonuses to Arcane and Nature damage as well as Star Surge. Star Surge is going to sound pretty familiar if you've been playing season of discovery at all, but Cataclysm was when it first came into the game. However, this version of Star Surge does have a cast time, it does do heavy damage, and it will also contribute towards your Eclipse state. Your mastery as a Moonkin is Total Eclipse, which further increases the damage bonuses received when under the effect of either Eclipse state. Your mastery will be learned from your class trainer at level 80, not straight away upon picking your talent tree though, and mastery on gear therefore is only found on Kata content after level level 80. So you're probably asking now, what's Eclipse? Well, it's very different from how it was in Wrath of the Lich King, I can tell you that much. But in Cataclysm, if you're playing Boonkin, you're now going to have the very famous Eclipse bar. When casting Wrath, you'll gain Lunar Energy and Starfire Solar Energy. Depending on which one you cast, your Eclipse bar will move in that direction. When it hits 100, you enter Eclipse causing either nature or arcane spells to do bonus damage until your bar has moved back down to zero again, and then you cast until the bar hits the other eclipse state and rinse and repeat. So you're still doing the thing where you alternate between wrath and starfire as filler spells, but now you have more control over when your big burst damage happens, as opposed to the wrath version where you crit, and it can happen at a bad time. In our talents, a lot of things from Wrath have been combined together, so I'm going to try and focus on the new stuff here. Balance of Power now gives spell hit rating from any spirit on gear. This is a change that many casters are going to see in their talents, as spirit has now been redesigned to a healer mana regeneration stat otherwise. Moonkin Fall now just flat out reduces damage taken by 15% at all times, making it into a very solid passive mitigation tool, along with its existing effects. Euphoria Euphoria is a new talent that makes it so you can hit your eclipse state faster, and it grants you mana when you're doing so. And just below that is Dream State, which is another tool to aid the Boonkin's mana situation. Shooting Stars is one of the most fun talents in this tree, making it so when your dots tick, they have a chance to instantly reset the cooldown on Star Surge and make it instant cast. Solar Beam is another new addition for Kata, which gives Boonkin's an option for interrupting. This ability can situation be very powerful if enemies can be silenced because you can take them out of action for 10 seconds straight. Also amazing in PvP when combined with roots on casters, it nearly always forces a trinket. Cataclysm is also when Sunfire comes into the game. When entering Solar Eclipse, your Moonfire will change into this spell. It's not the AoE version though, that came in a later expansion. Starfall also changes to only hit things in combat too, and doesn't do that extra bit of AoE damage to stacked targets. Otherwise, it's still a good cooldown to fire off when in Lunar Eclipse. Boonkins run prime glyphs such as Wrath, 
Moonfire and Insect Swarm for bonus damage. Next is Feral, we'll start with Cat. So when you pick this talent tree you will instantly get Mangle, Bear and Cat, which work basically in the same way that they always have. They're a good damage dealing instant attack and they apply a debuff. You also gain 25% bonus attack power as this spec. Feral Instincts reduces the chance to be detected whilst prowling and for your mastery your bleeds will do more damage. Jory Swipes is a new talent that gives you a chance to instantly attack for high damage every 3 seconds, whichever form you're in. Another new addition is Stampede, which gives you a big bonus after you use Feral Charge. For cats, your next Ravage will have no positional requirements, will not need stealth, and will be free to cast. Brutal Impact also gets a bunch of updates and can reduce the cooldown on your Skull Bash down from 1 minute to 10 seconds. Survival Instincts is now your Shield Wall type effect on a 3 minute cooldown, and reduces all damage taken by 50% for 12 seconds. Towards the bottom we have Blood in the Water. This is kind of your Execute Phase talent for Cat, making it so when you Ferocious Bite a target below 25% health, Rip is refreshed. This is great for when you can snapshot a powerful Rip effect with procs or cooldowns running. Berserk at the bottom of the tree is the same talent as it was in Wrath, just giving you 50% less energy costs. Catch use glyphs such as Berserk, Rip, and maybe Tiger's Fury. When you pick Bear as a talent tree, you also gain Mangle, of course, and 25% attack power. You also get Vengeance, which is a new addition across all tanks in Cataclysm. This makes it so when you take damage, you gain attack power, which caps out as a percentage of your total health. Well, that's the simple version of it anyways. Just imagine it as being, when I take damage, I do more damage. Your mastery is Savage Defender, which increases the amount absorbed by your Savage Defense. On the talent side of things, Bear makes some different choices to cats, or gains different benefits from the same talents. Feral Aggression makes Fairy Fire instantly apply 3 stacks, meaning you get a 1 button press instant maximum power armor debuff. Thick Hide now also reduces the chance to be crit by melee attacks by 6%. The reason this is now in the game is that to defense as a stat is gone, and not something you're gonna have to be worrying about anymore when tanking. Natural Reaction is just a bunch of stats for free, reducing damage taken in bear form by 18%, increasing dodge chance by 6%, and giving 3 rage whenever you dodge. Pulverize is a new ability towards the bottom of the tree that consumes lacerate stacks, and increases melee crit chance by 3% per stack consumed for 18 seconds, so that'll be 9% melee crit at max stacks. Remember crit is super good for Feral due to Savage Defense and their mastery, so this is very good. And Berserk works the same as it does in Wrath, causing Mangle to cleave and have no cooldown, but there's also a new and extremely powerful bit of text on this talent, which makes it so when Lacerate ticks, it has a 50% chance to reset the cooldown on Mangle Bear and make it free. Bears run glyphs such as Berserk, Lacerate, and Mangle, and you should expect to see a lot more Feral tanks in Kata than you did in Wrath. It'll be a resurgence of them back like it was in TBC, but again, more on that soon. And finally, we have Restoration, a spec that I played back at the start of Kata, and I had so much fun with it then, so let's check out their talents. When you pick this talent tree, you get Swift Mend, which works pretty much the same as it always has done, in that it consumes a heal over time effect to heal a target. It can be glyph to not do this as well. You get Meditation for Mana Regen, Gift of Nature for more heals, and Disentanglement allows Resto Druids to shift out of Roots and Slows. And yes, only Resto Druids can do this now whenever they want. Ferals have to use some cooldowns or get dispelled to escape Roots. Your mastery is Harmony, which makes it so your direct heals gain a bonus, and when you cast a direct heal, your heal over time effects are also improved for 10 seconds. You'll want this buff up at all times, but it's very easy to do just through regular gameplay. In the talent tree, Nature's Swiftness now improves the effect of the healing spell it's used on by 50%, so a crit Nature's Swiftness healing touch is going to be an enormous heal. Revitalize gets redesigned and doesn't give other classes resources anymore. Instead, it's a mana regeneration tool for the druid, which also causes a life bloom to give your raid a bit of mana too. Malfurion's Gift is a huge talent, giving life bloom a chance to proc clear casting and massively reducing the cooldown on tranquility. Empowered Touch is another big improvement for the druid, giving bonuses to your direct healing spells and making them refresh life bloom on the 
target, so just a really easy way to keep life bloom rolling on your tank. Nature's Cure adds a magic dispel effect on to remove corruption, giving the druid much better dispel coverage. And druids also get Efflorescence, which is a new and iconic restoration talent, making your swift men put a zone on the floor that heals nearby allies every second for 7 seconds. Finally, probably one of the more controversial changes for druid in Kata is that Tree of Life is now a cooldown. Now when it's used it causes roots and regrowth to be instant cast, wrath to do more damage, life bloom can be casted on any number of targets, and wild growth will heal two extra targets. The biggest problem with this change for me was always the absolute uncanny look of the new tree form. I mean, come on, who saw this and thought, yep, looks great, let's ship it. Either way, you can glyph back to the old form if you really want to. Other glyphs restoration uses will be life bloom, rejuvenation, and swift mend. So those are our class changes and talents, but how are we expecting Druid to be represented in PvE in this post-shattering world? Well, as always with Kata, the answer is going to somewhat depend, and that dependence is on the size of the raid, and more importantly, the difficulty that you're taking on. Whereas in Wrath, players would gravitate much more towards 25 player raids, and in that environment, it's very easy to tick off all the necessary buffs and debuffs. But Kata has both 10 and 25 player raiding on Heroic as both equally viable options when it comes to challenge and the rewards offered. Now Blizzard did give way more classes the same buffs and debuffs in Kata, but it still tends to be the case that casters buff other casters and physical damage dealers buff other physical damage dealers. This means when you're in a 10 player raid and the content is actually kinda hard, certain specs may be preferred just by the nature of your raid comp. That being said, I think the most in Android spec in Kata will be specifically for a Feral off tank. Whilst Ferals are just as capable of main tanking, their big benefit, which no other tank can do as well, is the fact that in between actively tanking, they can hop into cat form and still put out some respectable damage. Things such as talents, itemization, glyphs, depending fight to fight, will affect how much you can spec into damage or needing to tank, but this is still a big selling point for Feral. Also, they are the only class in the game to get two masteries from one talent tree, which is kind of probably hidden OP. They also bring decent buffs and utility such as a combat res and stampeding roar. And ferals are also pretty simple to play in terms of tanking, and a ton of their mitigation just happens naturally thanks to your mastery and savage defense. They bring good single target threat, much improved AoE threat thanks to a buff swipe as well as thrash, and embody that druid style of tanking of just being really good at taking hits. So expect to see plenty of feral tanks in Kata. Next one is kind of hard to pick, it's going to depend on your raid comp again, but I'd probably go for Boonkin. With an updated rotation with way less RNG than the Wrath of the Lich King version of Eclipse, Boonkin enjoyers are probably already looking forwards to the expansion. Boonkins also pack a lot of very unique utility, such as Typhoon to knock mobs back, and the fungal growth talent leaving behind a slow field after wild mushrooms explode can really come in. There's more than just a few fights where this is very useful. The single target and burst AoE should also remain strong points. Honestly, if you liked Boomy and Rafa the Lich King, I don't see why you wouldn't be up for giving it a go in Kata. And particularly in caster comps, this spec should find a welcome place. I think restoration also comes a long way from Rafa the Lich King too. It's just depending on your raid size, the disc holy pally meta is still kind of hard to get away from. But with the overall changes to how healing is approached, where it's much more about getting the most out of your mana, rather than just topping any non-full HP bar, heal over time effects go up in value big time. A problem which resto druids will noticeably start to run into though is RNG damage effects which they cannot prepare for in advance. They also show weaknesses on fights more focused around spot healing, large bursts of damage. All the same, I do really rate them as a strong pick for the expansion and hopefully I'll be playing one as my main alt, but we'll see how things go there. Finally would be feral cats. So first up, the power of having a feral off tank doesn't really do too many favours to somebody who just 
wants to play Cat, as both specs are capable of bringing nearly the exact same buffs and debuffs depending on your spec, it's just one of them can tank and the other cannot. Still, cats can perform, and if you are a long-time feral enjoyer, I don't see a reason to stop in Kata. All that being said, each druid spec is viable and can perform well in PvE, but as is typical in World of Warcraft, there will be some specs which are more in demand than others. Let's move on though and talk PvP. When it comes to PvP in Kata, no longer is it the case that Arena is the only form of competition to be had, as rated battlegrounds are now in the game. This new 10v10 format of PvP brought life back into old battlegrounds by offering guild experience, conquest points, and the chance to get old PvP titles from vanilla once again. And in this new world, Druid finds a place in many different comps. Balance will be seen for the most part in 3v3 or rated battlegrounds compared to 2v2, as they're more susceptible to being focused down. Big talent additions for PvP are the classic routes into solar beam combo on healers. This nearly always forces some kind of cooldown to be burned. And Wild Mushroom with the fungal growth talent can fulfill so many different uses. From sniping a healer trying to drink around a corner, slowing enemies around a pillar or a choke, being used for surprise burst damage and so on, it's just a very versatile ability and talent combo. Another big addition for the boomies is Lunar Shower, which basically opens up a no casting boomkin build. It makes it so when you moonfire, its direct damage done is increased by 45%, and mana cost is reduced by 30%, stacking three times, lasting three seconds. So now you can really just run around spamming moonfire as every other instant cast spell, it does good damage and it'll build you towards an eclipse. I'd say compared to Wrath, boomies get noticeably better in PvP and Kata due to their overall utility, survivability and damage output on the move. Resto Druid also is in a pretty good spot. Again in Kata our health bars start getting pretty enormous so heal over time effects tend to get a lot more value when the game is about control and wearing people down and not just blasting them from 100 to 0 in a few seconds. Also remember that Resto Druids are now the only Druids that can shift out of route or slows on demand, making them very difficult to lock down for any period of time. And when you finally do close the gap, they have hots running and they can just shift into bear form or pop bark skin to reduce a ton of damage taken. Another thing to know about Kata PvP, which is worth a mention here, is that mortal strike effects have been reduced down from 50% effectiveness to 25%. This is a buff to all healers in PvP of course, but I just thought I'd give it a mention here in case you didn't know. I wouldn't say Resto Druid is an absolute S tier pick in Kata for PvP however, due to being a bit lacking on the cooldown side of things. Nevertheless, they are strong. Which leaves us with Feral, and Feral is the big winner out of the Druid specs for this expansion in PvP for sure. You still have two ways to break out of roots by the way with dash and stampeding raw thanks to the feral swiftness talent. You get an interrupt and a mini gap closer in skull bash, shield wall from survival instincts, a last stand effect from frenzied regen, and of course the thing that's been feral's big strength for a long time now, an instant cast cyclone every time you spend five combo points. It's kind of like blizz took the wrath version of feral and just added more damage and solved its survivability problems. So if you PvP a lot, expect to see a lot of ferals in all brackets in Arena and in RBGs. Let's move on to tier set, starting with tier 11 from Bastion of Twilight, Throne of the Four Winds and Blackwing Descent. This is one of those strange tier sets for me because the normal mode version of it with the electric blue looks way better than heroic to me, which is just kind of brown. But anyway, for Feral the two set increases the periodic damage of Rake and Lacerate, giving both Feral identities a rather small extra amount of damage. Remember all damage over time effects can crit by defaulting Kata and your mastery as a cat improves bleeds further. The four set makes it so when you mangle in caps you gain 1% attack power for 30 seconds stacking three times, so a small addition to your total attack power, but one you'll want to be tracking. For tanks it increases the duration of survival instincts by 50%, so with this tier set we're talking an 18 second shield wall effect for tanks. 
For boomies, the two set adds some crit chance to your insect swarm and moonfire, so not bad but not too exciting either. The four set increases crit chance of spells by 15% for 8 seconds after your eclipse activates, decreasing by 5% with each crit. This used to be 99% bonus crit, decreasing by 33% with each crit, but it was so good that Blizzard had to nerf it in Firelands. So I wonder if we're going to get back the correct tier set for phase 1. For restoration, the two set gives 5% crit on the periodic portion of Life Bloom, so just some extra healing there, and when Life Bloom is at 3 stacks, you gain 550. 40 bonus spirit. You'll always have life bloom at 3 stacks on the tanking kata and you'll be refreshing it non-stop so this is just a bunch of extra mana regen really. Tier 12 from the Firelands looks like it could have been a monk set from the future teleported back to me and I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of it. I guess having an entire raid tier centered around fire didn't fit too thematically well with the druid class. Then again in Molten Core they just gave tier 1 some antlers and leaves and called it a day. For Feral the two set makes it so attacks with Mangle Maul and Shred deal 10% extra fire damage over 4 seconds, so just a nice extra damage over time portion to abilities you're already spamming. The 4 set is interesting, so finishing moves have a 20% chance per point spent to extend the duration of Berserk by 2 seconds. Now I haven't played a Feral of 10 game during Wrath of the Lich King, but with Heroism or Berserking and all these other haste procs running, you must already be able to pack a pretty good number of 5 combo point spenders into that window. I'd hope for around 6 extra seconds on Berserk from this, which would mean a 40% extra duration total. The 4 set for Bear makes it so when Bark skin fades you gain 10% extra dodge chance for 12 seconds. For Moonkins the 2 set has a chance to summon a burning treant to aid you in combat for 15 seconds. According to Wowhead this has a 20% proc chance and a 45 second internal cooldown, so about a 33% uptime on your fiery friend. And whilst up they'll be spamming fire seed for some minor damage. Your 4 set basically just gets you into your next eclipse state faster and it should go nicely with the euphoria talent as well. And the 2 set for Resto gives each tick of life bloom a 40% chance to restore 1% of your base mana each time it heals a target. So that'll be about 186 mana in case you are wondering, and considering life bloom will be on the tank and pretty much always ticking, this seems like a pretty good mana restoring tool. The 4 set makes Swift Mend heal a second injured target within 15 yards for the same amount, and no apparently it does not cause a second efflorescence to bloom on the second target. Target. Still, this seems like a very powerful tier set for the resto droids out there. And finally, tier 13 from Dragon Soul. Not World of Warcraft's most popular raid ever, but I kind of like how the tier is presented though. But either way, as we will see throughout these videos, the tier set bonuses in Dragon Soul tend to be kind of crazy good. The two set for Feral makes it so whilst Pulverize is active, your Mangle Bear crits have a 100% chance to trigger Savage Defense. So this is just a great extra a bit of damage and mitigation for ferals. For Cat, the 2 set makes it so Ferocious Bite refreshes the duration of Rip on a target with 60% or less health. Pretty amazing tier set bonus here. The 4 pieces are just a crazy OP for all tanks, and this set is no exception. It makes your Frenzied Regen affect all raid members, so that's basically last stand on your entire raid. Yeah, pretty good. The 4 piece for cats makes it so Tiger's Fury also triggers Stampede Cat, or in other words you get to press Ravage for free every 30 seconds. For Boomies, the 2 set increases the damage of all your direct spells by 3%, and the 4 set reduces the cooldown on Star Surge by 5 seconds and increases its damage by 10%. Not the most exciting for Boomkins actually, but it is increasing your damage all the same. And for Resta, the 2 set makes it so after innovating the cost of your healing spells is reduced by 25% for 15 seconds. This is great for those moments when you know there's a lot of damage incoming and you can really make the most of it. And for Resto Druids, the 4 set makes it so your Rejuvenation and Regrowth spells have a 10% chance to time slip and have double their normal duration. Kind of goes without saying this is just an amazing bonus as well, albeit kind of RNG. And that is the Druid in Cataclysm. I think each spec remains fairly familiar to how things play in Wrath of the Lich King. The 
there's just a little something extra that you can now do. I do think Druid remains a pick with tons of potential and is still a great choice for someone who wants a main with a bit of flexibility in terms of what roles they can fulfill. I'm definitely considering having a Resto Druid as an alt myself to see how it stands up compared to what I remember from back in the day. But we are going to be playing on the final patches balance as we always have with Classic, so maybe things will be quite different. Either way, this is the first of the class vids for Cataclysm, and I'll be covering every class in the months to come running up to launch, so keep an eye out for the one that you want to know a little bit more on. And if you made it to the end of the video, do drop a like, a comment, all that good stuff. I don't usually ask too often, but it helps get the videos out there, especially on the larger projects such as these. And finally, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you on the next one very soon.